Remgro. It was established in the 1940s by the late Dr. Anton Rupert as a tobacco manufacturer. Now, after the reorganization of the Rupert family interest in 2008, Remgro remained as a South African industrial and financial investment holding company. Their portfolio currently includes more than 30 investee companies, banking and financial services, medical services, food, wine and spirits, petroleum products, glass products, mining, media and technology. Remgro has a market cap of 64 billion dollar billion rand rather than a price to earnings ratio of seven uh claude let's get your view on remgro right now overall what are your views because i mean just looking through that list they have so many investments right now across such a broad range of sectors they do i mean i i always look at remgro i'm a big fan of remgro i'm a big fan of what the Ruperts do generally i kind of subscribe to the logic of follow the money a lot of the time and they're not really in the habit of making mistakes so and well losing money let's put it that way and generally i like the company um biggest news for me is you know well, one of the bigger things is um the the sad death of their ex-ceo Tase fissa but the one of the nice things that you that for the company out of it is you know the succession plan and mr rupert actually came out and said you know we were lucky in the fact that we didn't have only one choice to go to. We had numerous choices to go to for the next CEO. And, you know, Yanni Durant's been there for, what, about 15 years, very established in the business. And, you know, the succession plan is great. So I think going forward, it's not, you know, a lot of other companies could lose a CEO and it could be a big issue. But, you know, for them, I think they, they're pretty well, well placed on that. Yanni Durant, as you said, taking over from Tesla, who sadly passed away, the right man to lead Rem Grow forward. Yeah, Yanni's a clever guy. He's my age, 45, you know, yeah. he's in his prime. Um, you know, I'm not as big a fan of this as, uh, as many people, so it feels a bit like whistling in the graveyard to say you don't like Remgro, but I really don't. In the old days, the justification for owning it was it was the only way to get to British America tobacco. Because when the Ruperts reorganized themselves and went global with the tobacco business and bought assets internationally, Remgro was your way of getting this enormous cash generative tobacco asset. As you said in your introduction, when they broke it all apart in 2008, they took out Richmond which I like a lot. They took out British America Tobacco, which I would never invest in, but some people like it a lot. So what you're left with is this investment holding company. And as a result of lots of reorganization, it's basically kind of half of its assets are financial in nature, mostly focused around the RMB, RMI kind of group. And that's because Johan Rupert's chums were the guys that started the Rand Merchant Bank Group. In fact, he worked there for a while. Yeah. Then there are a whole bunch of industrial assets, some of which are listed, some of which are unlisted. You know, Mediclinic, uh, Rainbow Chickens, a big stake. Unilever. In Unilever, yep. South Africa, big stake, half of Total, you know, the fuel uh, refiner and distribution channel. So, you know, my main problem with it is that if I wanted exposure to those specific industries, I can go buy them myself. I don't want to buy someone else's idea of what the ideal portfolio is. And if I wanted to invest in, you know, one or two exciting private equity technology assets like they've got in there, which are the only that I like. Which aren't doing well, actually. I'd also go out there and look for those. But th those aren't doing well. Seacom has been under pressure. Uh, what are your thoughts on the kind of performance, relative performance of that technology aspect of the business versus the other ones? You know, it, it, having, having a look at it, they haven't been performing quite as well as what you would have hoped. But I think... In future, I mean, I've always said it, I've said it on the show before, my view on the, the technology side is I'm a big believer in bandwidth and I think bandwidth is the way to go in anything. Uh, you know, there's, it's going to be, it is obviously the way we get our data, the way we communicate. I mean, you, in, in other companies, you'll see, you know, guys like Skype, that sort of thing. A lot of, a lot of communication is done over, you know, it's sort of voice over IP, that sort of thing. You communicate on Facebook, you watch videos via YouTube. Bandwidth is a big thing. So I think going forward, it's just going to be more, you know, it's going to be more and more important in your daily life. I mean, the, the way you get things that you wouldn't ordinarily think of. You know, you wake up in the morning, you watch the news on TV. A lot of guys are waking up in the morning, looking on their iPad and seeing what's happened overnight. It's easier to get your data the way you want it. So for me, I think it's something I would be patient with, and I think it will show dividends in future. Let's move on. Uh, Sabido Investments is uh, in the media space, and that, that's 
owns 31.5% stake in ETV. Uh, what, Paul, what are your thoughts on, on this ETV ETV, stake? I've never heard I've, of it. I've, I've, I mean, we're CNBC, not going to spend too I've much time because there's only ETV. one news channel as far as I know. I've heard there's a rumor of the channel called ETV, but I've never actually it's a big, watched it. It's a big rumor. <laughs> Look, I love their well. technology assets. The other one which they've got is 51% of a company called Dark Fiber, which is basically an independent company that's building a fiber optic network around the country for other parties to use. And that's a recent mm -hmm. Fantastic, fantastic, wonderful asset. Yeah. And I love ETV as an investment, actually. I think it's a very successful property, and I think it's going to do fantastically well. So those are great assets. The problem is they are irrelevant in terms of the scale of assets that are represented by the 65 billion rand portfolio. Well, they're not irrelevant, but they're probably worth 2 or 3% of the total. Okay, so, and implants, because mining is a very small part of the overall portfolio, but they've got that uh, stake in implants right now, and we know how badly implants is doing in terms of production and how that's going to hurt earnings. Yeah, it's not, look, it's, it's not a jewel in their crown by, by, by any means, but in terms of how big it is in, in the overall portfolio, it's not a massive, massive holding that they have. Yeah. You know, I, I, I think... Keeping it there, I mean, they've obviously taken a lot of mining assets out. I think having it there over time, they will either, you know, drop the holding slightly or just hang on to it and wait for it to perform a little bit better. It's not, you know, I think possibly taking the view that things are not always going to be terrible in the mining sector and things are not always going to be terrible in, you know, the, the platinum sector. So for me, it's not a massive problem in, in their portfolio, but... That's just my view. Okay, let's get straight into it. Mm. Hot or not, 132 Rand, just over that today. The only thing that would make me hot on it is if they were to do something totally enormous, like leverage the portfolio five times and sell off everything that was listed, or, you know, go big or go home in one particular sector, which would transform it from being a boring, staid investment holding company into something truly uh, substantial and worth investing. Otherwise, not hot. Not hot. Hot or not? You see, I'm on, I'm on the other side to this. I look at it from a slightly different aspect. I mean, Paul's a sophisticated investor. He's looking at this as, I can go and find these things in the market if I was interested in them. I'm looking at it from the man in the street, and I think, you know what, if you're not that sure and you want somewhere that, I, that, that you'd like to be with a reasonable degree of confidence, I like them. I, I, I always think they're hot. I, I like Remgro. 